Welcome to this video. We're going to talk about how we can do the control unit lab. So we have our data path right here. And if you look in the library that I gave you, you will find this control circuit right here. And you can also double click on it and go into it. So I built most of this or all of this for you. And all you have to do is copy and paste this onto your data path. So to do that, just uh, do uh, Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac to select everything. Then you can copy and then go to your data path right here. And you might want to zoom out a little bit for this um, and then paste it in. And now we just need to drag it off to the side. And you got to want to be really careful. Grab something really big that you see like this thing right here from our control unit and then you can drag it over to the side right here. Now um, if we were to zoom in on this right here, um, one thing that you might want to be careful of is um, there are some uh, tunnels here that you might have used. Maybe you might have used a clear tunnel or a reset tunnel. So uh, make sure that you don't have uh, two switches conflicting with that. Now I went ahead and copied the control unit that you have and just pasted it on this blank thing. But again, you would want paste yours on your data path. Now the one switch that might conflict is um, this reset thing right here. So um, if you already have a tunnel connected to a switch called reset and you put them in different position and you turn one on and the other off, then you'll have a conflict. So you might want to delete your reset from your data path and have this become a reset for your entire uh, computer. So once you have that copied and pasted onto your data path, the next step will be to create your start button or your data button. You only need to create one uh, of these. But you just follow the um, state machine design lecture. Just follow that video, but use this as your um, state transition diagram. And the B here stands for button. So you can see in this state right here, and this is the, the state you probably want to label 00, zero or the first state right here. Um, you can see that this button, it, it um, has an exclamation mark right there. So while they're not pressing the button, we're just stuck in this state, waiting for the button to be pressed. Once they press the button, we'll move to this state and we'll stay there however long they hold it down. So if they hold it down like in it for an eternity, uh, half a second or so, and for a computer that can do 9 billion instructions in a second, that is an eternity. So if they're holding down the button, you're just stuck in that state. As soon as you release the button, We'll go to this. Uh, we'll go to this uh, state right here and produce an output. So um, this will signal our machine to start. If this is our start button, and it, again we just uh, we make two copies of this, and then we have another copy for our data button. So when uh, we want to acknowledge that we've seen an output or that we're ready to give in an input, and then um, this signal will tell the computer we're ready but it will only do it for one clock cycle and then it will move back here waiting for them to press the button again. So um, follow the other video, the state machine design video and make state machine that your, your button state machine and um, when you turn it in you will need to uh, have these pictures of these either in your video or send these pictures in, just zip it up and uh, send your video with pictures that uh, show that you designed your own state machine. Now I just want to give you a clear idea that um, this is our sync bu button right here and if you notice it has three inputs. So uh, what are the three inputs? One is the, the switches like start and uh, data. The other one will be the clock, and the third one is a reset. And then you have the one output. And I just want to show you how you connect this uh, button to your uh, control unit. Now sometimes you go and you, you see all your wires are blue or something like that, or sometimes it says uh, simulation halted by internal error. 
A way that you could try to fix that is just reset the simulation and then enable the simulation right there. So if that ever happens to you, it turns all your wires uh, green. I'm glad I caught that on video so you can see it. And um, you see right here, I've hooked up my button right here. So this was the start uh, thing wire that's blue. And then we also had the data wire somewhere. Um, here, here's the, my data. I'm using a tunnel. But down here somewhere we have um, where the data connects. And you'll see that it's blue. But you can see that my clear or the reset line is hooked up here. We have the clock coming in. So it's sharing the clock with this guy right here. And then this is the button right here. And then you have another one, another, it's the same circuit placed down again with the clock and clear. And now this one is the data switch. And then the output connects to the data tunnel. So that's how you connect it up. And once you get it connected up, all you have to do to pass off is, of course, show your pictures for doing your state machine design. We need to see the state transition table, the K maps with the final circuit. And then, uh, of course, make sure you show your state machine that it, it's working the way that it's supposed to. Show that in your video. And then connect it to this and then make a video uh, of this thing going through the states 50, 51, 52, 53, and then jumping to 0, 0, 77, 78, 79, and then back to 50. And then, of course, you have your IR register up here that you can uh, change around and ha try out different instructions. And again, watch for one more video that I will post that will talk about exactly what the, how this works and what it does. So there, one more thing I want to show you just to make sure you understand how those inputs um, come together. This, if, if you're doing watching the state machine design video at the end, you put down two D flip-flops from memory. You connect uh, this triangle input together, both of them together, and that becomes your clock, the input that you want to be your clock. Now the clear is supposed to reset these to state 0, 0. And this is why I recommend that your first state or the start state start in 0, 0, because when you turn on clear, it'll reset it to state 0, 0. So to do that, see this 0 right here? That means to clear it out. And so you can connect that to the clear. And then um, finally, you have your button input right here that'll feed into the logic right here. And you'll have to come up with a circuit by doing your state machine design. And then the output will be an AND gate that will be encoded for that one uh, signal output state so that it will turn on on that one uh, output. And once you get that, there are all of your inputs that you have for your button. Thanks for watching.